Welcome to an introduction for Excel by Frank Rust. In this lesson, we'll learn about relative cell addresses. You will also learn how to enter data into cells. You'll learn how to enter formulas into cells. You'll learn how to copy and to paste cell contents. In, ad in addition, we'll introduce you to functions and to the data analysis tool. This is a very important lesson. All of the following lessons on this CD are based on the assumption that you have completed this lesson. This is what Excel looks like. It's a spreadsheet and it has little boxes or cells all throughout it. It has columns A, B, C, D, E, F, etc. And it has rows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Any cell can be identified by its address, which is the intersection of the column and the row. In this case, I've clicked on cell C3 because it's in column C, row 3. The, the address usually appears here in this name box, which is above uh, the letter A. Let me click over here, say to J7, or J8, I guess that is. You can see in, this ad in the name box it says J8, and I am in, in column J, row 8. Let me click again in cell C3, and I'll type in a number. Let's type in the number, oh, 4. And now notice that as I type in, not only does the number appear in the cell, that's addressed, but it also appears up here in the formula bar. Now I'm going to press in the second number. Now notice down here it's on the left side because I haven't pressed enter yet. When I press enter, it will go over to the right side of the cell. That's only true with numbers. Letters will stay on the left side of the cell. Notice also that when I that when I hit enter, the next cell down became highlighted. Now on some of your spreadsheets, it may be the next cell over. The default and the one I like to use is where it goes down. Uh, and let me type in another number here. I'll type in the number 67. And again, it says 67 up here above the C. It says 67 here. Now, once I press Enter, the 67 will move over here, and my cursor will go down to the next cell. Let's see if that happens. Here, I press Enter, and there it went down. So far, what Excel has shown in each of the cells is exactly what we've typed in. But sometimes we want it to do some calculating for us. Let me show you an example of that. Let me go over here. I'll click in this cell. You can see this is cell D3 because it's in column D, row 3. And this time I'm going to press an equal sign. That's the way I tell Excel that I'm going to start calculating. You can see that it also added these characters to my uh, spreadsheet. This is a little different. This is XP. It's a little different on older versions, but it, it, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Okay, I press the equal sign, and now I'm going to press C3, which is a cell address. And notice that in this case, a blue box will come around C3. That doesn't happen in earlier versions, and it's a nice feature, but it, it just is a visual guide. And now I'll press a plus sign, and then I'll say 2. Now you might think that what this is going to do is take what's ever in C3 and add 2 to it. Let's see what it does. Ah, you're probably saying that's exactly what it did. It took the number that was in C3. I'll click back on here. Here's the formula I put in. I put in equal C3 plus 2. But this is what shows in the cell, is 47. But it really isn't correct to think that what it's doing is taking what's ever in C3 and adding 2 to it. This is where the term relative cell addresses come in. 
what it really is doing is it's taking the cell that's one cell to its left and adding two to it. In this case, that happens to be C3. But watch what happens when I copy these contents. I'm going to go Control, I'm holding down my Control button and pressing my C button. As I do that, it will copy the contents that's in that cell. Now I'm going to go down here to cell D4 and paste it. And you probably are saying, well, he should be getting 47 again. Because that's what's in C3 plus 2 is still 47. But that's not what we'll get. We'll get what's one cell to the left plus the 2. See, we got 69. And this, even though we copied C3 plus 2, that was a relative address. So when it came down here, it knew the cell to the left was C4. So it put C4 plus 2, which is 69. I probably should have mentioned, while I did my copying by pressing Control, holding it down, and pressing C to copy, when I pasted the number in D4, I pressed down Control and pressed V. I don't know how V gets the paste, but that's what you do. You hold down Control and press the V to on your keyboard for it to paste. Now that we've done this wild thing, let's try something really wild. Let's go over here to cell E3, and this time we're going to multiply. We're going to multiply the 45 in C3. Oh, let's multiply it by 2. So what I'm going to do, since I'm going to do calculating, I'm going to press my equal sign that tells Excel I want you to do something. Don't just write down what I type in. And now, instead of typing in C3, which I could do, but another way is I could just click on C3. And I get these little ants marching around the cell, but I get it'll enter C3 in this cell for me. Now I'm going to press the multiply sign. The multiply sign in Excel is a, a, a postru um, the asterisk, excuse me, the asterisk, which is Shift-8 on your keyboard. And now I'll press the number 2, and this should be 45, or whatever two cells to my left, uh, times 2. And I get 90. Now if I wanted to, I could copy this, control C, and type here, and I'm not going to get 90. I'll get 2 times 67, which would be 134, I believe. The moral of the story is that there's two ways that you can put a cell address in a cell. One way is to type in the cell address, like C3. Another way is just to click on the cell, and its address will go in the cell that you're typing in automatically. Now I want to clear this data before we go on. This is the way I can highlight all the numbers that I have. I'm going to go here to say C2, press my mouse button down and keep it down. And now as I'm keeping it down, I'm going to move my hand like this. And notice that all the numbers become darkened except for the first number I pressed in. Let me do that again. I'm clicking on C2. And then I'm holding down my mouse button. I'm going to go like this and highlight all the numbers. And now I'm just going to press delete. And they'll all go away. For the next exercise, I'm going to have some different numbers, and I'm going to make a smaller screen so, um, so that it's easier for you to see. So I'll only be showing you part of the screen, but do realize that it's part of this whole screen is what would be on your computer. So now, instead of showing you the entire screen, uh, the entire spreadsheet, it just makes it a little easier for me in this video to show you part of the screen. But this is the part of your worksheet that we were looking at before. This time I've added some numbers so that we can play around with some numbers. I just put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. in these columns. Now, let's. what I want to start out doing is adding up these three numbers. So let me go in cell D1, and I'll press an equal sign because I want it to do something. And I, what I want it to do is add up what's in A1, so I'll take 
A1, I'll press the plus sign, and then I'll say uh, B1. It doesn't matter if it's upper or lower case. Uh, XL isn't case sensitive. And now I'll put C1. And now, if I press Enter, it should add up 1 plus 2 plus 3. So I'll do that. Now, one of the nice things about Excel is once you've done something, there can be easier ways to, to repeat that action. Here I added up one, uh, A1, B1, and C1. What I want to do now is, is do that same thing, but for this row, for this row, and for this row. The way I do that is, do you see how right now the cursor is a big fat X? It looks like a, a red cross X, except it's, except it's white. But when I put my cursor right here near the corner, actually right here near the corner, it turns into a, a thin X. It goes from heavy to thin, just like that. Man, I wish I could do that. Go from heavy to thin, just like that. So once it turns to this thin X, not a pointed X like this, not one with arrows, but just a thin X, then I can press down my left mouse button, which is just my regular mouse button, and hold it down, and then I can use that handle to go like this, and when I let go, it will ta do what it did here in the next three rows. So in this case, it took the three cells to the left, added them up. This took the three cells to its left, added it up. So when I click on here, it says A1 plus B1 plus C1. If I go down to the next cell, it'll say A2 plus B2 plus C2. Here it says A3 plus B3 plus C3. And here it should say A4 plus B4 plus C4. That is one of the most valuable features in Excel, is that once you've done an action, it can repeat that action on relative cells, cells like the cell you're doing it on, and uh, with, with a lot more ease. But still, we had to type in A1 plus B1 plus C1. Imagine if we were typing in 60 numbers. That would be hard to do. A1 plus B2, or B1 plus C1 plus D1 plus E1 plus F1, etc., etc., etc. Fortunately, there's an easier way to do that, and that's to use function. Let me add up the columns. In this case, I want to add up uh, everything that's in column A. What I can do is I can go down to A5, and I can press my equal sign, because I'm going to want it to do some calculating. And then I could just type in SUM, which is S-U-M. I could do that in either upper case or lower case. It doesn't matter, mixed case. And then I'm going to say what I want Excel to SUM. And I can do that by doing a data range. I can, a data range, I'll press a left parenthesis. And then I can say, start with A1. And then I'll put a colon, and I'll say end with A4. So what I'm doing is I'm defining the top left side of the data going down to the top right side. In this case, it's only one column. Uh, so it's A1 to A4. And now I press my uh, closing parenthesis, and when I hit Enter, there I've got the sum. The sum of 1, 4, which should be 5, plus 7, which should be 12, plus 10, which should be 22. And that's what we got, was 22. Now, to do the remaining columns, I could just grab the handle and pull it sideways. And so the sum of this column is 26. The sum of column C is 30. And the sum of column D, which, by the way, is the sum of these sums. Uh, numbers is 78. Again, that 78 is the sum of our row totals. So that should be the sum of all of our numbers, our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All of those should sum up to 78. Let's see if I'm correct. 
I'm going to go here in cell D6, and I'm going to add, tell it to add up these numbers and see if it ends up to be 78. How do I do that? Well, I'm here in D6. I press an equal sign. I'll say sum, S-U-M. Then I'll press a left parenthesis. And now that I've done that, I'll say my top left cell is A1. And then I put a colon. And I want to go all the way down to C4, which is my bottom right data point. So C4. Then I'll press the right parenthesis, hit enter, and if we did well, we should get 78. Voila! We're doing great! As easy as that was, there's even an easier way to do that same thing. Let me show you how, the, how to do it even in an easier way. I'll get the same answer, but I'll put it here in oh, B6. So the way I'll do it is I'll press an equal sign, and then I'll press type in the word sum, and then I will press a left parenthesis, and now I'll just click on the cell A1 and hold my mouse button down, pull it down, so that now all of my numbers are captured by marching ants. And do you notice that it's typed in for me, A1 colon C4. Now when I let go, I can press my closing parenthesis and press Enter, and I get 78 again. So you can do it either way. You can type in the address, or you can just highlight the, the cells that you want added. Either way works equally well. The sum function is just one of many different functions, hundreds of functions, that Excel has. Excel has over 80 functions that are statistical. That is, you just put in an equal sign, you tell it what you want done, you tell it where the data are, you press enter, and the answer just magically appears. So Excel can be very useful if you don't want to do a lot of hand calculations when it comes to statistics. But it turns out Excel also has an, uh, another tool. Uh, other than functions, it has a tool that's specific to doing statistics. Now to find that, and your computer may or may not have it because it doesn't come automatically installed with Excel. It's something that you need to add in. Let's go to uh, up here to this menu where it says File, Edit, View, Insert Format, Tools. Let's click on Tools. Now when you click on Tools, you'll see down here where it says Data Analysis. Now if the full, you may have to click on the little uh, double arrow there to get the full menu. And Data Analysis is usually at the bottom of your tool menu. Now if you have it, you're all set and we'll learn how to use this data analysis tool in, in a bit. But let's imagine that you did this and you don't see data analysis. Let me set up my uh, set this up again so that when we look we don't see data analysis and then I can show you how to install it. Okay, so here you are. You click on Tools. You don't see it. You click on this double arrow to make your full menu appear. And you don't see data analysis. What can you do? Well, what you do is you go to Add-ins. I know this looks like Add INS, but it's really Add-ins. You click on that, and a dialog box will appear. Yours may look a little different than this, depending on the version of Excel you have. But it will have a list with, with these boxes where you can put check marks. Now, all you need to do to get data analysis is put a check mark by the one that says Analysis Tool Pack. Now, this one that says Analysis Tool Pack VBA is not the one we want. If it's already checked on your computer, leave it checked. If it's not checked on your computer, leave it unchecked. The only one we're concerned with is the one that says Analysis Tool Pack, but does not have the VBA after it. So you put a check mark here. Now, normally you can just press OK, but sometimes Excel might ask you to put in your CD. 
you may have to put in the CD that Office, Microsoft Office came in or that Microsoft Excel came in into your computer because it may need it. Um, we'll just check and see. I'm, mine won't need it because I've already had it installed before. So now when I go up to Tools, we'll see Data Analysis is there. It should be at the bottom of the list. And I'll click on Data Analysis. And here's a bunch of functions that the computer can do automatically for us. There's ANOVA, ANOVA two-factor, ANOVA two-factor without replication, correlation, covariance, descriptive statistics. And it has this long list of things. And I can use this elevator button to go down, t-test, z-test for two sample means. So all of these things can be done automatically using Excel. And we will be using this throughout the course. This will be a very useful tool. It can take a problem that if you were to do by hand, might take you four or five hours. And with Excel, it'll take you two or three minutes at most. So once you've got your data already entered. So Excel is a very useful tool. It'll save you a lot of work. And this data analysis tool is something you definitely should install on your computer. I'll press cancel here. There are a couple other things I want to show you before we end this lesson. And that's at the very bottom of the page. If we look down here, you'll see that it says Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3. Let me go in for a close-up of those. Let's do a, let's do a close-up view. In this case, we can see this is the bottom of our worksheet. Here it says Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3. And on Sheet 1, it has, in this case, I've put this information. Sheet 2 is like a different page in the same file. Just like in a Word file, you may have many different pages. In an Excel, you may have many different sheets. Sheet 1 is a page that has this information. If I click on 2, that has this information on it. If I click on 3, it says, Hi, from your old Uncle Frank. That's me. Hi. Anyway, so each page can have different information on it. You can add more sheets by going up to Insert and clicking on Add Worksheet. Or you can delete worksheets by going up to Edit and clicking Delete Entire Sheet. You can also rename these sheets. To be, uh, if, if you don't remember what's on Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3, you could instead give them names that would remind you of what's in them. In this case, I might want to call this one Critical Care. So what I'll do is I will right-click on it. Now, that's, normally we use our left mouse button. But in this case, we want to click on it with our right mouse button, and we'll get a menu. And in this case, it'll say Insert. By the way, I could insert another worksheet page right from here. I could delete the worksheet page right from here. Or we could rename the worksheet, which is what I want to do here. So I'm going to click on this, and this becomes highlighted. And I'm going to call this, uh, oh, I'll call this trauma. Maybe this is a trauma room. So T-R-A trauma. Did I do that right? So I could now click on sheet 2, and I could give that another name. Oh, just for the fun of it, maybe I'll call this one Problem 2. So I'll come up here, say Rename, and I'll say maybe P2. This will give me a better idea of what's on this sheet rather than just Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3. I can also move these sheets around. All I do to move them around, say I want trauma at the end, is I left-click on it and hold my mouse button down. And then I just move it over and let go, and now it's here. But I wanted it at the end, so I'll move it here. So I can rearrange these sheets any way I want, in any order I want, with no problem at all, and I can give them whatever names I want. I can get rid of sheets, or I can add sheets. And when I save this as a file, they'll all get saved in the same file. So this is a very useful thing to do, is you have one file, maybe for your midterm that has problem one, problem two, problem three, 
or whatever problems you want. And you can have a separate page for each problem. One last thing I want to leave you with uh, before we end this lesson, and that's how to do simple uh, arithmetic functions or use operands. Simple arithmetic operations. That's like addition, division, exponents. Addition, you just use a plus sign. So I might do uh, an equal 5 plus 6, hit enter, and it should say 11. For division, let's say equal sign 6, and then the division button, which is just a slash, divided by 3, which should be 2, and it is. Now, the exponent is when you want to square something or move it to the third power. Let's do something to the third power. This time we put an equal sign, a 2, and then a caret, which is shift 6. Looks like a little up arrow. And then uh, 3. And this should be 2 to the third power, which should be 8. We can do multiplication. That we've already done once, so just equal sign. We'll put in 2, and then an asterisk, which is shift 8, and then 3, and then hit enter, and this should be 6. We can do a percent. Let's say we do 2 percent. Whoops, I forgot the equal sign. Equal sign, 2 uh, percent, press enter. And that's what 2% would look like. And for subtraction, uh, let's do equal sign 5 minus, which looks like a, a hyphen, 4, and then press Enter. And that's how you do simple arithmetic uh, operations on Excel. So that's it for this lesson. The next lesson will show you how to do more specific problems. Thank you very much.